I'm gonna start to draw in the basic structure of the oral mucosa. This is the basic structure of the oral mucosa. The oral mucosa is the membrane lined the inside of the mouth and consists of is the basic structure of the, the oral mucosa. The oral mucosa is the oral mucosa is the membrane lined at the inside of the mouth and consists of the stratified squamous epithelium and consists of the sterilized sterili squamous epithelium. I'm gonna abbreviate that term the oral the oral epithelium. This part of here is the oral epithelium. The oral epithelium is the membrane lined the inside of the mouth and consists of sterified squamous epithelium. This is the oral epithelium. As we know, the oral epithelium is made up of sterified squamous epithelium. An underlying connective tissue, and also the underlying the underlying underlying connective tissue. Then uh, this part of here is the connective tissue between the epithelium and the, and the connective tissue. We have what we call the vessel layer. This part of here is the vessel layer. This replacement membrane separates the epithelium from the connective tissue. Epithelium, this is part of the epithelium from the connective tissue. We're gonna say the vessel layer. The vessel, the vessel layer. Connective tissue this is the connective tissue. Connective tissue can be defi uh, defined into two parts. The lamina proper. The lamina. The lamina proper and the submucous. The submucous. This is the part of the submucous. This is the submucous. This is the all we have the, the submucous. The lamina proper, this part is the, the lamina proper. The lamina proper below the epithelium is the fibrous connective tissue layer that consists of the network of tab 1. And tap three collagen fiber and and elastin fiber fibers. The lamina proper consists of tap one and tap three collagen and elastin fiber in the summer region. The main cell of the lamina uh, uh, proper are the fibroplasts. The main cell of the lamina proper are the fibro fibroplasts. The fibroplasts, which are responsible for production of the fibers, production of the the fibers and extracellular matter. And also extracellular matter. The lamina proper consists of two major parts. The babylon layer. This part of here is the babylon layer. This part of here we have the babylon layer. We have the babylon. The babylon. 
layer. The pupilla layer is the more superficial layer of the lamina proper. It consists of connective tissue within connective tissue, uh, connective tissue, babila, along with the blood vessel and the nerve tissue. All right. And also, the second one is the dense layer. Is the dense this is the dense layer, this part over here we have dense we have the dense layer the dense layer is the deep layer of the lamina proper it consists of dense connective tissue and large amount of the fiber between the pupillar layer and dense layer we have the capillaries which provide nutrition for the air layer of the mucus and sending capillaries into the connective tissue. All right. This is the submucous. The submucous may or may not be present deep to dense of the lamina proper. If the presence of the submucous depend on the region of the oral cavity, if of the submucous may continue connective tissue or adipose tissue or salivary gland as well as overlying pon or muscle. This is the overlying pon or muscle. Overlying pon of the muscle. Remember, epithelium is unfascular tissue, which means no blood, no blood supply. For that reason, you could ask how does it get nutrient and water? Because the epithelium contact directly with environmental and the connective tissue because the nutrient and water reaches cell through the diffusion through the diffusion the oral mucus or the oral mucus anatomically between the skin and GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract or GI tract as I told the oral mucus consists of two major parts is the five squamous epithelium and the connective tissue Esterified squamous epithelia, the incarotenized esterified squamous epithelia consists of the four layer. Here we have the four layer. Here we have the four layer. The four layer in incarotenized. Epithelia are the first one is stratum, stratum basal, and also stratum is benosum, stratum is benosum. And also stratum glenorosum and stratum stratum corinoma. Alright? The four layer and also the four layer in nine carotenoids epithelium are the four layer the four layer in name carotenoid epithelium are I'm gonna abbreviate that stratum stratum basal and stratum is benazum Remaining are the same, but the outer layer are termed intermediate, stratum intermediate, intermedium, and, and the superficial. Depending on the region of the oral cavity. Depending on the region of the oral cavity. 
We're going to classify the oral mucus into three different types. The first one is the first one is the lining. The lining mucosa. The lining mucosa. The first one is we're going to classify the oral mucus into three different tabs. The first one is the lining mucosa. The lining mucosa is is a name is a name keratinizer is a name keratinizer is stratified is stratified is squamous epithelium. I'm gonna abbreviate it. The lining mucosa is the name keratinizer is stratified is squamous epithelium found in the found the found in the soft palate the soft palate and also the floor found in the soft palate the floor of the mouth and also the ventral the frontal of tongue. All right. I'm finding almost everywhere, everywhere else in the oral cavity, include the buccal, labia, and. An alveolar mucosa. The buccal, labial, and alveolar mucosa. The buccal mucosa refers the inside of the cheeks and part of the lining mucosa. And also the labial, labia refers to the inside of the lining of the lips and part of the lining and also alveolar mucosa between the gummies and the buccal or labia mucosa. Alright? Is the lining mucosa and also have three characters, three important characters of the lining mucosa. The first one is the soft uh, softening mosey the third one is ability to stretch and compress. The second one is masticatory mucosa. This is the masticatory mucosa. This domestical mucosa is the is curtainizer the curtainizer we have the two types of the curtainizer two types ortho curtainizer and paro the curtainizer this domestical mucosa found in The found found in dorsum of tango, dorsal of tango, and also hard palate, the hard palate. Attached to the gingiva. The mystical mucosa is a keratinizer. We have two types of the keratinizer, ortho keratinizer and also the parocarotinizer. Mystical mucosa found in 
the dorsal tango, the half palate, and attach it to the gingiva. All right. And also, this, this, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, this the line, uh, this the Mr. Kiromi calls that uh, have two character. Also, the two character. The red berry. Are resilient. The last one is a specialized mucosa. Specialized mucosa. A specialized mucosa also is keratinized. Is a keratinized mucosa. Is a keratinized mucosa found in found in dorsal tango dorsal of tango and also the lateral of the tongue. Now I'm going to talk about the function of the oral mucosa. Is the function of the oral mucosa. The function of the oral mucosa. The first one is the protection. Protection. The protection act as the major barrier to the microorganism. The second one is sensation. The second one is sensation. This is the receptor that responds to the temperature, touch, being testing, and initial reflex, such as swallowing, ganging, and salivation. The third one is secretion. The third one is the secretion. Saliva contribute to the maintenance of the Moses service. Permeability. Permeability and permeability and absorption. The thinnest epithelium, the thinnest epithelium region floor of the mouth is the more permeable than the other. The last one is the thermal regulation. The last one is the thermal regulation. That's body heating despite through the oral mucus. That's it. Thank you for your watching.